Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Irie from On The Hot Podcast. Today, this is going to be episode 85 for you guys today. Of course, this episode is going to be coming on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So let's go ahead and dive into episode 85. Starting with the first segment of the episode, starting with the question of, will Lamar Jackson be the starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens heading into next season? Now, to me, this is a toss-up to me. He could be on the roster. He could not be on the roster. I'll be sharing my thoughts on that. Uh, but no, I do not believe that Lamar Jackson will be a part of the Baltimore Ravens roster and be a part of the organization come week one of next year's NFL season. Now, Lamar Jackson could be fran will most likely be franchise tag. There's no way that the Baltimore Ravens will not franchise tag him. No matter if the uh, if he stays with the Ravens or not, they're not going to let him just walk into free agency. If you're going to want Lamar Jackson and trade for Lamar Jackson, you're going to have to give up a lot. But I do believe that the solution, if Lamar is not on the Ravens, they will franchise tag him, and he will be traded by March, no later than the NFL draft, if he is no longer part of the Ravens. So that is my prediction. Um, I just believe that there's no way that the relationship is good anymore between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. I feel like there is a divorce brewing between the two. I just think that the contract dispute, the contract negotiations just made this relationship rocky from the beginning of the season all the way up until the end of the Baltimore Ravens season now officially since they've been eliminated from the playoffs. I just feel like there's it's been a bad relationship. I feel like Lamar Jackson feels like in his heart he's being shorted of what he believes he be, uh, that he deserves contract wise when it talks about guaranteed money. He wants guaranteed money, uh, like a guaranteed money contract with the likes of a Russell Wilson, with the likes of a Deshaun Watson, with the likes of a Kyle Murray. And when you think about it right now, what the, all those guys are getting guaranteed mil, to over 200 million guaranteed, Deshaun Watson getting 230 million guaranteed, and you see how the way he came looking back in his first year back in the NFL, he's better than Russell Wilson right now. He's better than Kyle Murray right now. He's better than Deshaun Watson right now. So in Lamar Jackson's heart, he's seeing these three guys that he can that he contributes to his team way more than those three guys. He contributes way more wins than those three guys do. He believes that he deserves his money. And I feel like he this is why the relationship became so rocky and it got to the point where uh he did not even fly in to the Bengals game that wild card game, that Sunday night game, the world just witnessed. Lamar Jackson was nowhere to be found on that sideline. He did not go and fly out with the team. Now, obviously, every team has uh, has rules where injured players can't fly out with the team and they don't make the trip. Well, Lamar Jackson is the franchise of the Baltimore Ravens. I don't care if the Baltimore Ravens do have a rule where he can't fly in with the team when he's injured or not. He is the franchise guy. He had the opportunity to be out there with his boys on the sideline in a win or go home situation. And instead, he was sitting at home somewhere in Baltimore, Maryland, was nowhere to be found on the sidelines. It wasn't even there to cheer on Tyler Huntley, who was a few plays away from helping the Baltimore Ravens win that game. And they would have advanced on to play the Kansas City Chiefs this upcoming weekend. It would have been inter interesting to see if Lamar Jackson played in that game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But... I'm not a doctor, but by any means, I'm not a doctor. But Lamar Jackson announced in a tweet last week that he had a PCL grade two sprain on a borderline of a, a strain three, uh, a strain of grade three. That injury of a of a PCL grade two sprain take normally takes three to four weeks to come back and recover from. Lamar Jackson has not been on a football field participating in whether it's a game participating in practice since December 4th when this injury happened against the Denver Broncos. So it's been a long time. It's been way longer than three to four weeks. And I'm not, it just seemed like he didn't try have an effort to come back to the Baltimore Ravens, tried to give it a go. It didn't seem like he tried to practice whatsoever. There, I have seen no reports that he tried to practice. I see no reports that he was having a willing effort to go out there. He missed over 16 practices. He's missed six straight games, 
and how the game played out Sunday night in that game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Like I said, Tyler Huntley and the Ravens were a few game, flew, a few plays away from winning that game. You look at that uh, touchdown that was scored in the fourth quarter, that fumble return that, uh, that was recovered for a touchdown by the Cincinnati Bengals defense. It was a tie ball game, 17 to 17. The deciding factor of that game was when Tyler Huntley fumbled the ball in the end zone, and the Cincinnati Bengals took advantage of it and scored for a touchdown. Other than that, if that mistake doesn't happen, the Ravens might win. And they damn sure win that game if Lamar Jackson plays the way how the Ravens defense strapped up Joe Burrow and company on that loaded offense that the Cincinnati Bengals have to offer. So you can't tell me that Lamar Jackson would have made a difference. You can't tell me Lamar Jackson wouldn't have won that game for the Baltimore Ravens had he made an effort to be out there with his teammates. And... I just feel like if he had his contract already that he wanted at the beginning of the season, he didn't want to negotiate before the, in the middle of the season for a contract. If he had his money already, he would have nothing to lose. He would have been at least, if Lamar Jackson even gave a 50% effort to go out there and play Sunday, they would be moving on to play the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round of the playoffs. You only have, these are the moments that you got to live up to. The, the Ravens were there to make a run this year. They uh, they acquired Roquan Smith from the Chicago Bears in a trade to better their defense. Since Roquan Smith's been there, their defense has been top-notch. We've seen that in their performance against the Cincinnati Bengals. They had a winning effort against that loaded offense. And Lamar Jackson could have been the deciding factor. I just feel like if he had his money, he would have been out there with his guys. I feel like we should have been hearing reports that he's making an effort. But there's no reports. There's really no story that we know this going on between the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Maybe Lamar Jackson could have been behind closed doors and told his guys, he told his coaches that I'm not going out there to risk further injury. Now, do I blame him for that? No, but a PCL injury that I just read in a matter of three to four weeks, he should have been back out there, at least trying to go back and practice for his teammates or hell, even try to play in that game. So I feel like Lamar Jackson's going to leave. I feel like the relationship uh, is edging on to uh, a divorce between himself and the Baltimore Ravens uh, franchise. I don't believe he will be with the team come week one. But these are the reasons why Lamar Jackson should leave the Baltimore Ravens to begin with. And Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens have not, uh, I should say the Ravens have not used Lamar Jackson's full potential has not g gained all his full potential. Yes, Lamar Jackson was the uh, unanimous MVP in the 2019 season. Yes, we saw that. But Lamar Jackson has slowly regressed since that 2019 season. The stats don't lie. Now, is it Lamar? J all Lamar Jackson's fault? He does make some mistakes at times. Yes, he does. But it's because of the system he's playing in. The system he's playing in in Greg Roman's offense is better. It's good enough to be a offense in Anne Arundel County when you talk about playing high school football. I should not see in a playoff game with 24, 20, no, 27 seconds left, an inside uh, halfback carry inside the red zone when you have two timeouts inside the 20 yard line. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. Greg Roman has failed Lamar Jackson after that 2019 playoff run. I hate to say it. The organization and the Ravens organization has never provided him with a pop with a proper number one wide receiver. Lamar Jackson's best wide receiver and as a number one option since he's been with the Baltimore Ravens has been Marqu uh, Marquise Brown, aka Hollywood Brown. If you think Hollywood Brown is truly good enough to be a number one wide receiver, he couldn't prove it in with in uh, with the Baltimore Ravens and. He's a number two, number three guy with the Arizona Cardinals right now. So that is not a number one wide receiver. Rashad Bateman has not lived up to the hype that he once had when he was first drafted in the first round. Deshaun, bringing Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins is not going to cut it to bring a good effort out of Lamar Jackson to see what he can truly do with a number one wide receiver. Yes, they have tight ends. The Ravens and that offense love tight ends. Greg Roman loves tight ends. Yes, Mark Andrews is there. But Mark Andrews is a tight end. He needs a true, proper number one wide receiver. He was never he was never presented with that in his time with the Baltimore Ravens. And you look at everybody in the AFC has their buddy, has a number one target, or has been surrounded by weapons around them since they've been playing where their respective franchises. You look at Patrick Mahomes. 
Tyreek Hill's not there anymore. He's working it out with Travis Kelsey and his other weapons, but Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes has always had weapons around him. Kansas City has always provided Patrick Mahomes with the weapons of a Travis Kelsey, a Tyreek Hill, a Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, a, a rookie Sky Moore. I keep going on and on about Patrick Mahomes' weapons. Then you look at Josh Allen in Buffalo. When Josh Allen was there for his first few years, what did they do in the t before the 2020 season started? They went out and got a number one wide receiver for him and Stephon Diggs, and that relationship has been nearly perfect since Stephon Diggs has been to Buffalo. He's surrounded by Stephon Diggs, Dawson Knox at the tight end position, Gabe Davis at the wide receiver position. He's had Cole Beasley and other guys are surrounded by him as well since he's been in Buffalo. You even look what the Miami Dolphins are doing with Tua Tungvaloa. Tua has been surrounded by what they do. The Dolphins gave up a first round pick to surround him with Tyreek Hill, drafted his boy from college in, J in Jalen Waddle. Mike is sicky at the tight end position. Then you look at Joe Burrow and Cincinnati. They did the same thing, drafted his boy Jamar Chase from LSU. They surrounded him with T. Higgins, Hayden Hurst at the tight end position, Tyler Boyd at the wide receiver position, and then last but not least, Justin Herbert. Keenan Allen is not always 100% healthy, but he's a stud and one of the best route runners when healthy. Mike Williams at the wide receiver position. Every quarterback in the AFC that's a true threat and that's going to be a true threat beyond for the next few years is already set around with weapons. Well, Lamar Jackson has nothing but Mark Andrews to his disposal. This is ridiculous. The Baltimore Ravens have let this go on too long. I think it's time for Lamar Jackson I know a lot of Ravens fans watching and listening are not going to like this, but it's time for Lamar Jackson to think about his future elsewhere. And there's a lot of teams that he can thrive and have a lot of success with. We'll see what plays out, but that's just my prediction. I think the Ravens are going to fran automatically going to franchise tag Lamar Jackson when this season ends. But I feel like the relationship is not going to be mended. And I do believe that Lamar Jackson will be playing for a new NFL team next NFL season.